Hey everyone, welcome to the 30 day speaker summit. My name is Daniel Francis. And in today's interview, uh, I have Pedro Pena um, for all the, all, all the viewers that are watching, uh, you know, if this is one of your first interviews, this is the 30 day speaker summit. This is a summit on bringing different um, uh, personalities, different perspectives on this idea of communication and on stuttering and on public speaking and just becoming the best version of you. So we got an amazing guest, uh, Pedro Pena, all the way from Houston, Texas. And Pedro has an amazing story that I cannot wait to dig deep. His story is so amazing that he actually created a podcast called My Stuttering Life. Uh, he's, you know, that podcast has been so successful. It's been, it's been featured in Podcast Magazine. Um, which Pedro can kind of talk on a little bit more. He's also attained his master's degree from the University of Houston Clear Lake with a degree in industrial organizational psychology. That sounds cool. Uh, he began to stutter as a result from a traumatic dog attack at the age of five. Wow. After 20 years of speech therapy, Pedro has embraced his stutter and no longer uh, lets fear dictate every facet of his life. And, you know, the category and the topic that we're going to be talking about with Pedro today is going to be on the idea of fear and truly conquering um, your fear if you stutter or whether it's public speaking or just speaking with confidence. So before we kind of get into the actual interview, um, Pedro, is there anything that you kind of want to give to the audience? I, I'm super excited to have you on today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a huge honor. Uh, I'm, you don't know how ex ex. Um, how happy I am to be here. <laughs> I've been breathing all morning. So I've been practicing. So I am ready to go. Let's I rock and that. roll. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, um, you know, one of my first questions for you, Pedro, is going to be on this idea of fear. Because, you know, a lot of people who stutter, um, they live in the, in the background, in the shadows, if you want to call it, where they don't want to show people that they stutter. People are going to not take them seriously. They feel like they're going to be judged. They're going to embarrass themselves. But you went completely the up the opposite direction. You, you said, not only am I going to talk about my stutter, I'm going to make a podcast about it. I actually make a podcast room in the background and go all in <laughs> so I can share my life. So let's, you know, one of my first questions to you is what does conquering your fear with stuttering really mean to you? Fear is a powerful emotion it it for 35 years of my life it controlled everything one of the b biggest um, ex um ex uh, one of the biggest examples was you know in 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 college my major was pre-law i have always wanted to be a lawyer. Um, I love to argue. It's in my blood. <laughs> and so in, in, in college, in my first year of undergrad, you know, during the weekend, went to the movies and this movie popped up my cousin v v v Vinny. And I don't know if, if you have seen that movie, but there is a, courtroom scene and there is an attorney and he has a severe st 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 stutter mm -hmm. and in watching him give his opening argument and having severe blocks and and re re repetitions my heart sank into the bottom of my left shoe because I saw my future and the people of the jury, when the attorney was having a block and he was spitting <laughs> onto the jury and their eyes are open and their mouth is open. I said, that is not going to be me. And that Monday morning, because the power of fear, I changed my major from pre-law to psychology and uh, and that's the the power of f fear growing up in in school you know first grade second grade you have to give an introduction and so i did that one time 
And in that one time, I was repeating, I was blocking, and I could hear the other kids laughing at me and calling me Porky Pig. And so after that traumatic experience, I said, no more, no more. From here on out, that will never happen to me again. And so the power of fear, my entire school life leading up to my undergraduate and my graduate school, I always missed the first two days of school because the fear of having to introduce yourself was so powerful. I said, no, I did it once. It was a horrible experience. I will never let that happen to me again because it's called survival. Mm. And in school, nobody wanted to hang around the kid who couldn't talk. So basically I was isolated. I would eat lunch in the janitor's closet. I would eat lunch behind the school, um, you know, because no one wanted to hang around the kid who would sputter and spit and just couldn't even say anything. And, and, and so the power of f f fear, it kept me isolated and no one, understands under, st under st what we go through as people who stutter on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a minute by minute basis, because what takes the average person, you know, like voicemail, okay? What may take them one minute to complete takes me 45 minutes. <laughs> because I have to breathe and there are repetitions and there is blocking. So I'm doing it over and over and over and over again for at least a couple of hours until I get it right. Mm. And by then you're exhausted. You are just completely drained because again, people don't understand that if you are a person who st 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 stutters from the time you wake up, until the time you go to bed, your body is tense. Every organ in your body is tense. Then when, um, and at the end of the day, when you go home, all you wanna do is just sit in the darkness in complete s s quiet and just, you don't wanna talk to anybody because all day long, you've been blocking, you have been repeating, you've been hyperventilating, you almost pass out because of the blocks. And, you know, and so, you know, people just don't understand what we go through, mm -hmm. you know, every day. Wow. That was, that was huge. That was, that was a great, um, that, was, that was a great way of explaining it and actually detailing it and giving like the raw emotion there. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think the biggest problem with a lot of people who stutter, or I wouldn't say people who stutter, but society is they don't really understand. Like, yes, we understand to slow down. We understand yeah. to breathe. Yes, yes, we, yeah. we get this. We understand. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I, I understand. I am anxious. I get that. I understand I'm tense. But it's, um, you know, it's people take it for granted their speech right. and their communication right uh, they don't they they don't understand the darkness that we go through mm -hmm. and by darkness you know growing up i mean going through school with having zero friends maybe one or two throughout the course of 12 years mm -hmm. but having zero people you know, have an interest in, in you and you're just all by yourself. And then you come home from school, you go to your room, you lock the door and you tell yourself the negative self-talk, you know, you're stupid, you know, uh, no one's going to hire you. You will never be in a relationship you will never have a job. And people told this 
to me on a daily basis. They told me that just after high school, apply for disability and just get a check every day because nobody wants you. Yeah. And at a certain, at a, at a, at a, at a point in your life where it's just darkness, you tell yourself, you, you, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be here. And, and so one day, um, I was in high school, um, it was a weekend. And so I said, um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm tired. And so at midnight, um, I grabbed my dad's gun and uh, I walked out of the house, walked down the street and it's, you know, complete darkness. And there, there was an overpass. And so I told myself, I'll just go under there and, you know, that'll be it. And, you know, walking that long road, I mean, just, you know, I was just crying profusely, you know, I, you know, nothing will ever go right in my life. And as I approached the underpass, there was a homeless man. And it, back then, where I live, we never had that. And there was this man and he approached me and asked, what was I doing? And so I told him, uh, you know, I have a stutter and, you know, I have zero friends and, you know, no one wants to be around me. You know, I'm called stupid. Um, I, I've been told I have a form of mild retardation. You know, I will never have anything in this life. So I'm just going to end it. And this man told me that you're here for a reason. We all have a purpose. You're here for a purpose. You need to find that purpose. We're all here on this earth to do something. You're here to do something. And it, the darkness, it went away. It went away and um, I never saw him again. I turned around, I walked back home. I tried to put the gun back quietly, but it woke up my dad and, you know. Um, so what I believe is that, you know, there are people th that are put in your path. I don't know what, you know, um, what everyone else believes in. But what I believe in is that people are put in your path for a reason. Mm -hmm. And that night he saved me. And, and so, you know, I told myself, I just, I just have to keep on going. I have to keep moving forward because I'm here for a purpose. I don't know what, but I'm here for a purpose. And so, I mean, that was a life altering um, event in my life when I was in high school. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's um, it's, it's, it's funny because I, I didn't go that far. Right. I, I actually had the gun cause I was, I was on campus and I could totally relate. Whereas I'm, uh, I moved away from home. I got no friends on campus and I'm in my dorm room at 3 a.m. You know, just in my thought, my heads are, or just my thoughts are, um, are uncontrollable. They just, and it's like all this negative, all these negative voices in my head. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting that um, when you go through those places in your life and you actually start to the other side when things start to when the light starts to expand um 
you actually appreciate it so much more. And I, I definitely believe in God. And I definitely believe that homeless man was there. So funny, the homeless guy who doesn't even have a home is giving you motivation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's unbelievable. And um, to, to go from that to where you are right now, you know, um, cause you have at the same time, Pedro, like where you are right now, you have a responsibility, you have a following, you have people and it's, you know, I, I this is my belief. God gives responsibility to the right people. Right. And when they go through these hard times and they actually push through, mm-hmm. um, that's what a real leader is. It wasn't like, I grew up, everything was easy, bada boom, bada bang. Cause those people don't take it for granted or sorry, right. those people don't, they, they don't deserve it. And um, I mean, to, I mean, to say that I've had (laughs) a hard, a hard life. Let me tell you, let me tell you, Daniel. (laughs) And so, you know, job interviews, Um, there have been times where I would hyperventilate, um, pass out. There have been job interviews where I do the heavy breathing and the other person on the other end is, um, you know, telephone job interview, you know, uh, you know, I have a hard time, hard time with H's. Well, the whole alphabet, but basically H's, you know, <laughs> I have a really hard time with. So I do heavy breathing. And so I had this telephone job interview. And, and so I, I couldn't say hello. I'm like, <sighs> and the other person said, you better hang up before I call the police. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, and so, I mean, we've all try to find the magic pill. You know, I tried voodoo. It didn't work. Yeah. You know, this woman held a rooster t- um, claw over my head and told me to turn around. And then she told me, let me grab an egg and glass of water. And so as I have the egg and crack it, you know, if the yolk holds, you're cured. I said, fantastic. <laughs> but if the but if the yolk breaks, then, you know, you still have it. I said, okay, let me just hope that the yolk holds. And so she, you know, has, has a glass of water and she cracks the egg and, and the yolk holds. I said, oh my God, I'm cured. And then, you know, I gave her the money. And so then I walked out so happy. I'm like, yes, uh, all those years of heartache, all those years, I am cured. And then (laughs) I go to a fast food place and guess what? <laughs> it's like, okay, lesson learned, uh, lesson learned. Uh, because for, for 35 years, Daniel, for 35 years, yeah. my entire body was tense for 35 years. And when I turned 40, the big f- f- four zero, let me tell you, Daniel, I woke up. I said, that's it. I am done. <laughs> I don't care if you laugh at me. I don't care if you, you know, um, uh, mock me, tease me. I don't care if you do any of that to me because I love Pedro. It took me 35 years, 35 years, Daniel, to say I love Pedro. Whoa. And Pedro has a stutter. It's not who I am. It's what I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I told myself that, when I got up from bed and said, I am done, no more. I am Pedro. I am awesome. That's it. I'm done. I will never worry what other people are going to think about me. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, Daniel, when I did that, 35 years of guilt, shame, Mm -hmm. anxiety, fear the f word fear <laughs> it's gone it is gone and 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 f- from that day onward it was i had i had confidence i mean granted i still had a stutter but i was confident because i loved pedro and let me tell you when i did all that a whole new world had opened up entirely new that I never knew existed because after that day I would push myself out of my comfort zone and fear lives in your comfort zone Mm. when I would like 
dip my toe <laughs> out of the comfort zone and do one thing that I would never do. If I failed, oh, well, I would learn from that failure, apply it to the next time. So that way, the following day, I would do it again and step out. And if I had a win, I would celebrate. I would go get me ice cream, cookie, whatever. I, Because for me, that was positive reinforcement. And every time that I would step out of my comfort zone. And believe me, I lived in my comfort zone for 35 years. I lived, it was comfortable. It was warm. It was cozy. But once I learned to step out of that comfort zone and do something that I would never do. And if I was successful, it would build momentum mm. and momentum until I can do anything. If that's when I told myself, it's time to give back. It's time to give back. I read an amazing book by Mel Robbins called The Five Second Rule. And in her book, there are tons of golden nuggets, mm. but the one that just hit me like a Mack truck was turn your, your, your um, anxiety and fear into Turn it, I'm into I'm ex, s, 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 turn it into I'm ex, s, excitement. And so when I would have to give a presentation, uh, I would just tell myself, because the old Pedro was like, oh, no, I, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I, I'm going to, you know, that, you know, negative, you know, self talk, you know, um, Mind, I named Oscar. And so when Oscar would pop up and say, no, you can't do it. I would say, I cannot wait to hop on stage. I cannot wait until they hand me that microphone because I'm going to rock it out. Wow. And when I did that, when I turned the fear and, ex and, um, ex and anxiety into ex ex excitement, it was like, what? What can I not do? Boom. And that's when, okay, YouTube. Boom. Try that. And let me tell you, that first video, Daniel, whoo, that was rough. <laughs> that was rough. I mean, I poured everything out. And then I didn't do another video for at least a couple of years because <laughs> that's how powerful that first vi vi video was. And, and, and that's when I told myself, Okay, if I can do this, let me do a podcast because I know there are a lot of people who listen to podcasts on their way to work, they're commuting, da, da, da. And so once I did that, because I believe we're here for a reason, we're here for a purpose. This is my purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I am giving back, I am letting other people who stutter no, you are not alone. You got Pedro. I'm in your corner. If you're having a bad day, I'm in your corner cheering you on. Cause I've been there for 35 years. Mm -hmm. I just turned 50. I mean, Whoa. I mean, you know, 45 years of having a stutter. I've been through 20 years of speech therapy. I did hypnosis. I did the voodoo. I mean, but I'm at a point where I love life. I love Pedro. Mm -hmm. I have a whole new world ahead of me. And, and I am just having the best time of my life. I get comments from all over the world, from Pakistan, Australia, Germany. I thought I was the only one because I, Daniel, I thought I was the only one. I did not meet another person who stuttered until I was in my 20s. Whoa. My 20s, I thought it, it was only me. It was only me. And when I met that person on the street, I knew instantly because when his hand reached out and he was trying to say his name, I looked in his eyes and I knew it. I knew that he had a stutter. Wow. And I couldn't say my name. And our hands are both holding <laughs> on the street 
we're trying to say our names. And finally, the words came out, I know. And once I said those two words, everything was awesome. We had a fantastic conversation. Granted, it took us 30 minutes, you know, to even get there. But once we got there, Daniel, it was awesome. That's it was amazing. awesome. That's amazing. That's sad. So what I'm understanding from you, Pedro, is that was that was a big line for everyone taking notes right now, uh, turning your fear and anxiety into excitement. Because that's that's essentially what I do. Like that's all I do now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if I were to go talk to a customer or I'd go, I'd go, you know, have to give a meeting and prepare for it, I would just literally. I think unconsciously, I was like, I get excited, get excited because you're in that feel good state right? when you're feeling good. Cause I used to do go, I used to go door to door and I would go knock on people's mm -hmm. doors. And, and the second I tried to like say, and I, and they would like get freaked out. Cause who's this mm -hmm. random guy on my property saying <laughs> like that. heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would be like, honestly, sir, let's just, just close it around me. It, it's all good. And I, and I went through that phase. Right. But I think one of the biggest things, and I would love to, I, I, before we kind of end off this interview, because I think we got a, a little over five minutes. Um, I really want to know, Pedro, from your end, um, if you can give some practical tips of truly just like overcoming fear. I think it's turning it into excitement, you know, going out of your way, loving Pedro. I, you know, that was a big one. Um, and, you know, just realizing this is who I am and I'm just gonna go take action. Like, this is what you did. You started the YouTube channel. You started the podcast. You just said, I don't care. And I, I don't think people have to wait till they're, they're 40. They can do it yes. at a much younger age. So go ahead. Yes. You know, please don't wait 35 years like what I did. And many things have helped me throughout my journey. Um, I now meditate. And so I believe in diaphragmatic breathing because d during school, we, um, I had speech therapy. Um, they hooked me up to this uh, computer. Um, there was a wire th that they put around my belly and they would tell me to, to take a deep breath. Then um, picture a mountain, okay? And so I will deep breathe. And then you're going to speak on the exhale and you're not going to stutter because your speech is very fluid. However, I sound like a robot. And so you have to practice and practice and practice. And so what a lot of people would tell me is practice makes perfect. And it does not, it does not. I don't believe in perfection. I believe in practice makes permanent permanent because if you keep breathing if you keep visualizing i cannot wait to hop on stage i cannot wait to talk to this person i i can't wait to just be with a group of individuals and just have a conversation because what i have learned is it's it's all about being present mm. life is about moments have that moment, enjoy the conversation, enjoy the person having the conversation. And so I never knew that. And once I learned that I would, I would, I would focus on the person and the conversation and not my stutter. Mm. And when I did that, there were days I didn't even stutter because I, I was, I was focused on the wonderful person telling me a delightful story story. And then I would give, you know, my part and I didn't stutter because I focused on the person. I focused on the conversation. I focused on being present mm -hmm. and having a wonderful time and not thinking about my stutter. Because once I think about it, that F word comes up, Daniel, and it's fear. The other F word, fear. <laughs> the fear, it pops up because you allow it to pop up. Mm -hmm. And so what I told myself, I can't wait to talk to this person. I am so excited. I can't wait. And once I have that mind set of, I cannot wait, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I didn't even think about my stutter. I love that. I love that. That is amazing. That is guys, if you just apply that right there from anxiety to excitement, 
this will alter your life forever. And, and, and Pedro, this is why I'm putting this event together because 30 days from now, if you start applying all this stuff, you will be a completely different person. And these basics, these gems, these golden nuggets when applied, that's really where your life changes. So for all the viewers, this is, this is kind of the end of the interview. If you haven't upgraded to the all access pass, I, I do a bonus interview with Pedro where we go more in depth on fear, on stuttering, and just more practicality that you can start applying to your own life. So if you, have, if you haven't upgraded yet, be sure to upgrade because you know if you enjoyed this interview, the second one's going to be that much better. So Pedro, w- 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 with that being said, um, is there any last words that you kind of want to leave off with the audience um, before, before we uh, go to the next interview? The, the one takeaway that, that, it, that I would like to leave with you is love yourself. Because for 35 years, I did not. I did not. I was empty. There was a void. And once I loved myself and said, Pedro, you're awesome. You can do anything in this world. Don't let anyone tell you what you can and cannot do in this world because you are awesome. Love yourself. And when I did that, a whole new world opened up. It's a whole new world. world. Love it. (laughs) Love it. Pedro, thank you so much again for for everyone watching. This is a 30-day speaker summit. We're going to be ending this interview off. Again, my name is Daniel Francis, the host of the 30-day speaker summit. And I hope you get a lot of value out of this and we'll see you in the next interview. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Daniel. 